Hello there and welcome back. My name is Yupari and I'd like to invite you into the next little segment of this portrait painting. So yesterday uh, we transferred the drawing and then uh, created the poster image. So all of this is now dry. So today we're going to start getting into some of the uh, values for the forms of the portrait. So we're going to start off by making a value scale. So just using a size 4 filbert brush. And if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below, and I'll have all of that information typed up for you. So we're just mixing from the darkest to the lightest tone. I'm using pretty much just burnt umber and titanium white. So we're going to start off this painting with a a monochromatic underpainting and we're going to try to uh, develop the underpainting as much as we can so we can see later on how we can build the colors in successive layers. So that about that's about good. So I've switched brushes to a tiny little uh, synthetic brush so we're going to be looking at the eyes with a little more focus now and we're going to be building on top of the poster image meaning just the boundaries between light and dark so this is one step above the darkest dark so this is just burnt umber with a tiny bit of the white so i just want to establish my darkest darks first. So there is going to be a clear distinction between the dark and the light. So uh, we're going to go into much more uh, focus into each of the individual features with this video than in my tutorials. In my usual tutorials, due to the time constraints with my other tutorials, I, I couldn't really show you all of the steps. So again, I'm just trying out this format where I'm uploading uh, every single day, and you can see most, if not all, of the painting and drawing. For those of you that are interested in seeing more footage, So that's going to be the dark for the tear duct. I'm not terribly worried about proportion anymore because we've, again, we spent all that time with the transfer drawing. And so that kind of allows us the freedom to spend pretty much as much time as we want rendering each individual feature. And when we and when we build color on top of this, you'll see that we will utilize these layers underneath. So that's going to be the dark for the tear duct. And again, the dark for the lower eyelid. Goes down to about here. want to make sure that these darks are intact. And again, the eye, think of the eye as a sphere. So let's introduce our first little uh, gradation of tone using the eye. So as we move closer to the light, the light kind of facing over here, it's going to get a little bit lighter progressively. So remember that value scale that I mixed up on my palette? I'm just taking directly from that now. So I don't need to do much mixing now. Just taking directly from the palette. Now hopefully you can see that the, 
the gradation of tone from light to dark here is starting to create a uh, illusion of a three-dimensional form being the curvature of the eye. It's going to be a little darker here. Here's a bottom of the lower eyelid. And again, I'm, I'm just trying out this format of uh, filming where you get to see um, almost every single brush stroke involved in creating a very classical, realistic painting. So a little darker over here. So the iris is coming all the way down here. And there's a little bit of light over here, but there's still a little gradation of dark happening right there. A little bit darker here by the eye socket. So again, the the values that I'm placing down, such as this one being darker, are not only not only am I relating the values to one another pictorially, uh, basically just two dimensionally looking at shapes of value, but I'm also thinking of the planes. This plane here is in shadow. And then this plane here, the top plane of the upper eyelid, is in light. And then there's going to be a little top plane to the lower eyelid, but that shape looks a little darker. And now we're going to move on out to the side of the concavity of the eye socket. So it's a little darker here. And the reason it's darker is just because this plane is angling away from the light. And now we're starting to move our way. Notice the little um, indent on the outline. It's basically telling us that these shapes are now turning this way. Now there are many different schools of thought on this, on how to approach the underpainting. Uh, you could go a more holistic route and just uh, develop the entire thing all at once and that's perfectly valid and I've done that before in my painting videos but uh, with this one we're going to be taking our time with each individual shape we're really going to be pushing the realism uh, with this painting And you're going to be part of that. You're going to be seeing this develop every single day. And lighter as it approaches the, the top here. Now each technique, each approach kind of has its benefits and the pros and cons, right? Um, so the biggest con with this technique, really I wouldn't consider it a con at all, but it all depends, um, is that it, it is a little more time consuming than 
working Ala Prima. And I say a little because um, with this process, it's a little easier to break it down into a series of steps. Ala Prima, that is painting wet on wet, uh, it's kind of always a race against time, at least in my opinion. And then if the painting dries at an awkward stage, then you may be forced to have to repaint certain areas. Whereas with this approach, even though it's a very uh, time-consuming thing, it's, it can be very structured. And by being very structured, it's just really relaxing. But it all depends on your temperament, of course. I'm going to go ahead and make the shadow a little darker. That might be too dark. I think that's a little better. Now again, like I always say, the beauty of burnt umber is that it doesn't get as dark as um, ivory black. So when we transition to color, it's going to be a very nice transition because we're going to have yet another uh, set of values. Uh, we can go even darker when we switch into color. So the dark for the eyebrow. I'm going to use the fan brush just to try to eliminate some glare. Switching to the light brush. Gonna keep working our way up here. So it's much lighter here. Now we're gonna look at the lower eyelid. So we're going to revisit this value and it seems like it can get a little darker. So again, it's going to need to get a little darker. So I push the, the value just beneath the upper eyelid a little bit darker so that I could come back into the sclera, the white of the eye, and push it even darker. Darker over here. Now the the white of the eye, as I always say, is not white. It's usually not bright white. And in this case, it's kind of almost in shadow. It's so dark. So again, we're kind of pushing the darks, moving back and forth. This is a very back and forth-ish kind of thing. And what I'm really trying to do is provide you with uh, footage and information that has probably never been presented to you before. Um, I know there's a lot of artists out there that 
film themselves uh, rendering an eye or um, any kind of uh, realistic type of depiction of something, but usually they'll do cuts, like cut scenes like I, I do with my tutorials, or uh, they'll do time lapses and then try to voice over the time lapses. Uh, but I'm trying to do something a little different for you. So you're seeing me create this painting in real time, and I'm talking to you as I'm painting. I have a microphone strapped onto me, and I'm talking to you as I'm doing this. So I'm really trying to bring you into the process. All of the successes and all of the failures. Everything presented to you each day. So I'm just relating the values now. Um, it appears to me that this shape here, its value is ever so close to the value of the iris. So now when I uh, encounter a situation like that, or I'm not sure of the distinction between uh, certain values, um, I think about the structure itself, the structure and the, the plane of the lower eyelid and the plane of the iris. They're both, they're both kind of angled at the same plane. But I want to say that the iris is pushed inwards a little bit. So we're going to test it out. Push it even a little bit darker here. Now this is why I say that I'm never really trying to copy a photograph. It's all about interpretation. Taking in visual information and problem solving. And creating a painting out of it. Let's see. Probably a little darker near the tear duct. Now we're going to work our way towards the bottom of the lower eyelid. Right here. The darker value. I could use a bigger brush for that, so I'm going to switch to a size one brush. So darker there, and now we're going to create a little gradation of form. Lighter over here. And again, we're going to push the darks. Darker down here. A little glimpse of light on the top plane of the tear duct. See, now even the tear duct is being subdivided into individual planes. And I know some of you may want a time lapse out of this, uh, but just scroll through the video. You can create your own time lapse at your own pace. I'm really just trying to provide more footage and more information. You know, sometimes I'm not even going to know what to tell you, and that's when I'm going to get kind of quiet and focused. Kind of like now. This would be called the getting in the zone. 
where you're completely focused on the painting. Alright, so there should be a softer edge here. A little bit softer. And a lot of this stuff we figured out in the transfer drawing. And so coming into this, I'm now much more informed about the form thanks to the transfer drawing. And the upper eyelid still looks a little questionable to me, its value. I think it needs to be a little darker. And now the angle, or the, the cast shadow, needs to get a little softer. So just lightly tapping the paintbrush. We're getting some soft transitions. Going to use burnt umber. A little bit of burnt umber just to push that that dark. I'm trying to make sure to not go over the boundaries of the uh, outlines that we established in the poster image. And there's a little little highlight on her on the top plane of her lower eyelid. Taken out of context that almost looks like a tear. So let's go ahead and make it very slight as it is in the image. Very slight. And again, we're going to push the dark for the, the eye. So that's the dark for the pupil. Let's just kind of spread that tone a little higher up. And there are very tiny little highlights almost little, like little flickers. Even tinier than that. I don't even have a brush small enough to paint those tiny little shapes. Super tiny. And now it's really starting to take form. At least I think it is. Let's go ahead and revisit the sclera.
and this light here on the corner of the eye and eliminate some glare and soften some edges the fan brush So it's getting a little darker closer to the tear duct as this plane is turning away. There's also a little top plane here. This is almost like a little bridge from the tear duct to the top plane of the lower eyelid. And it gets darker right above it. So I'm going to extend this dark shape out a little bit this way. I think I started shrinking the eye. Yep, and trying to fight the tendency to enlarge the eye. I think I shrink it a little bit. Well, I always have my transfer drawing now close to me, so I can always just refer to it. I'll push this light a little further out. I use the fan brush and see that real life problem solving. So the fan brush pushed some of that dark out. And again, here's the magic of oil paint. Super easy to fix. Well, I guess I might have to be replacing that fan brush soon. When fan brushes get um, used up, they kind of start to pick up paint as opposed to like softly blending it together. So back to the burnt umber. So I'm going to be very careful now with my fan brush. I'll be getting another one soon. Now we're going to move on to the other eye and we're going to do the same kind of thing. So I'm going to push the darks. Might be too dark. Add a little bit of titanium white. I think that's fine. So I'm going to be pushing the darks first. And I don't want to deviate too much from the outlines that we already established. The only thing I would say is just looking at my, uh, looking at the iris here, I think that it grew a little bit during the, uh, so this shape, I think that grew a little bit during the uh, transfer process, which is all right. It happens. So it's a good thing I have my transfer drawing nearby. So I'm able to look at it and reference it and see where any kind of uh, changes might have happened during the transferring 
and poster process. So again, we're just pushing these darks. The peak of convexity is up here. Then it starts to taper down. Very dark back here. All right, so now what do you say we start to add in some value transitions? So switching to the smaller brush, we're gonna to start to put some plain changes here for the lower eyelid, and then we're gonna move our way up to the sclera. So it's a little bit lighter here. Perhaps that was too light. All right, so now the tricky part is going to be with the, the uh, sclera. So the transition of value is going to be super subtle. And this sclera, the side of the sclera here is definitely in shadow. But there's still some light. So got to be very subtle with these value transitions. And even that might be too light still. So let's go back one more time. That simple. A little bit of dark here. The top side of the lower eyelid. And of course there's a little more light here. So the, the tear duct is going to be a little tricky here. So the tear duct is receiving a little bit of light, a little bit of light right there. So there's a little light there. And then here, tricky it's dark but it's still lighter than that area but it's still in shadow so all these little intermediate things so back to the burnt umber I'm gonna go ahead and push this value And if the if any of the areas get too dark, it's it's okay because we can still when once we get into color, we have another range of value that we we're gonna have access to. So I like to compress the value range for the underpainting. And again, the value range is compressed because we're using burnt umber only. And burnt umber will not get as dark as ivory black or alizarin permanent or ultramarine blue. So it gives us quite an advantage. And of course, it all depends on the brands that you use. This burnt umber, again, it's typed in the description below, but this burnt umber, I believe, is a... Uh, Winsor and Newton. So now the eye looks like it's starting to emerge. A little bit lighter over here. Some darker shapes over here. Then it wraps right into the tear duct. So 
amazing what you can do with just monochrome. So again, the lower eyelid, beneath the lower eyelid, we're going to have this little value transition. And I believe I, I heard someone refer to it as the tear bag, this area over here. But regardless of what the name is, it's a value transition and it's a form. So it's darker here and then it starts to get lighter right around here. And then darker again as it goes down. Got to soften that edge for that. And this is one way you can really get to understand form, get to know form. If you're someone that likes to work in Alla Prima a lot or doesn't like to spend uh, this much time on any one particular area, I would recommend trying it out at least a couple times. It really does teach you that the, that the patience is really something that can be developed especially in painting. I remember when I first, um, my first video with the classical approach, um, I don't know, almost a year ago now, I almost lost it in that video. It just, I didn't really know how to take my time and break things down and then trying to explain it. Uh, but I think back then I was doing voiceover style, so I wasn't talking and painting at the same time like I am now. Uh, but I do remember it was so weird to me to work in layers. And I didn't really know if it was okay to let areas dry in certain stages and all of that. But now, after, I don't know, however many dozens of paintings I've, I've made using the classical approach, which is this one, um, I will say it's a much more relaxing process than Alla Prima. It's much less demanding. And these days, um, I'm kind of at fault here with this, but these days there seems to really be a, a push towards Alla Prima everything. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I'm trying to introduce to you a different, more laid back approach to painting, and of course a more classical approach. Now I'm getting off on a tangent here. So again I'm just re restating the darks. So this dark for the side of the concavity of the eye socket. And then now let's go ahead and move our way towards the eye socket itself. Now this is all going to be in shadow. So the value changes here are going to be almost non-existent. So let's go ahead and put in a darker shape here for the back of the, the eye. And then of course I'm noticing again that the sclera might be getting too light. So one more little pass for that. And now let's go ahead and switch brushes. So this is a larger brush now. So not too many value changes in the shadow here, but there's still going to be a few, just a little bit. So it's darker here near the concavity of the eye socket, concavity of the eye socket. Um, and then it starts to get lighter over here. There we go. So it's starting to get a little lighter over there. Probably made it too light. So let's go ahead and push it dark again. Push and pull. 
push and pull. A little bit lighter up here. But again, the value changes are almost non-existent. So after I did that, I realized that I can still push the darks even darker. So right here. Now very carefully this time, I'm gonna use the fan brush to eliminate some glare. And again, darker over here. Very careful touch there. Remember the fan brush almost took out the other eye, so a little cautious. All right, so now the eyebrow. Not using quite burnt umber, but a little, uh, very close to burnt umber, but just a tiny bit of titanium white in the mix. And again, I'm just taking directly from the value scale that you saw me mix up in the start. So the eyebrow is going to have a very soft edge. I don't want the eyebrow to be too sharp. And I don't really want any of the edges for the underpainting to be too soft either. So now we're gonna bridge our way over to the other eye. So we're gonna walk our way over. So it's a little darker here. So this is the kind of the bottom plane really of the glabella. This plane right here is the glabella. And it's kind of a pathway between the two eye sockets. Then it'll start to get lighter as we walk our way up here. Now you're really starting to see the forms emerge. Then it'll be lighter even still down here as we approach the nasal bone. So the nasal bone right about here, we're going to mark the beginning of the nose right over here. The nasal bone usually shows up right above the tear ducts. 